Hey everyone, today we're going to work on a layered soap. Um, as usual, I'm going to put the names of the things I'm using up at the top, and I usually won't talk much about it past that, but for a second I do want to take a moment to talk about the Sparkle Sunshine. Yes, I am an affiliate with um, Mad Micah's, but whether I am or not, um, if you, I, I just have to take a minute to talk about Sparkle Me Sunshine. If you have not tried this color, um, I don't even know if I'd call it a color. It really acts like a glitter. Um, as you'll see, obviously it has a gold color to it. But if you have not tried this, I highly, highly recommend this. Um, it's my favorite glitter-like mica out there because it really it just really looks like glitter there are a lot of them that are fabulous but this is my favorite and um, you'll see it's I don't use nearly what I poured out here um, every bit of it will get used I promise I will either remelt the um, piece or tear it apart and use it for something else as a not necessarily a scrap but as an embed of some kind um, but you see me right now making little stars. These cutters, these mini cutters, um, I got on Amazon. Uh, if I can and find them, uh, can find them easily and get the link, I will share that in the description box. But as usual, if you do a search on Amazon, you can find most things if they're still available. There's a great bit of turnover um, from some of the companies that put these products out. And so sometimes things just aren't available or they're not available from the same company and you have to look for something similar. Um, I found these by searching mini fondant cutters. You could also possibly find them looking for mini clay cutters. Um, but I find the fondant cutters are usually plastic like this. Um, and that's not a bad thing. They're very sturdy, at least the ones I purchased. These are really, really sturdy. I have not had trouble with any of them. Um, and uh, they come in a variety of sizes and shapes. I got these in a uh, set of a bunch for really cheap. Um, and I've used them over and over and over again. I've used more, some more than others. Um, but I've, I've definitely used the stars probably the most, the stars and some of the little flowers. Um, the, anyway, the, I, you notice I really am not using a lot. I use a little bit more at the end other than the stars. And I mean, a, just a fraction of a sprinkle. Um, but the effect goes a long, long way. And um, this is to me, one of those cases where less is more. Um, I could have sprinkled up the whole thing and had the whole thing really super glistening and sparkly, but I really wanted to have the parts that were glittery kind of stand out, um, uh, highlighted, I don't know, uh, shown off a little bit better. And I think it worked really well. Um, the stars themselves uh, are, are just that glitter or that glittery mica. That's it. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about the less is more concept in a moment. Um, real quick, the reason I'm putting those little sticks underneath, which I also did find on Amazon, uh, those are just helping to level my table because it is not level and I always have to do that a little bit. So even though I use a level a leveler and try to get it <laughs> right, it usually something is off. And I could tell, you could tell when I poured that... Um, the gold right on my um, silicone mat there, which is why I was able to just peel that right up and why it was a nice, clean, sanitized surface before I poured on it. Um, it's, uh, I recommend those if you like to do uh, these types of techniques with melt and pour. I just, I could have poured it in the bottom of a mold to a really thin layer and cut. And I've done that before. You've seen it in, possibly you've seen it in some of my earlier videos. Um, so my mistake um, in this is I should have let the layer with the, with the little gold stars, I should have just let it set up first. 
and then poured an additional layer of clear and then set the little cutters in there. Um, it's not the end of the world. I was able to recover it, which you will see. And um, what you see me doing here, you'll, you'll see the mess up in just a second because you'll see what happens. But And you'll see how I fix it. Um, but what we're doing here is just adding layers. And every time I add a layer, um, I'm also blocking some of the soap from going places. This is kind of more of a, um, instead of an embed, it's almost like a reverse embeds. The stars are embeds. We're putting them in the soap. And the star cutters are blocking the soap from going places. So it's, I, I don't know, reverse embed really isn't any kind of technical term. I'm just kind of throwing around ideas. It's just keeping, uh, it's going to make a hole in the shape of a star. And the reason I shouldn't have put them in on the bottom layer is because they just cut right through, of course. Um, but my brain wasn't working on all cylinders this day, and I didn't think it through enough. This was an experiment. It was an idea I've been wanting to try for a very long time. And just in that moment, I wasn't thinking that through. I knew I wanted the back layer to be clear because I wanted the uh, at least one spot in each bar of soap. These will make, this is a very small batch, um, making three batch, uh, three of these at once. I'll do others off camera, but there's no way I could do them all at once and be on camera and do, do more than this at a time. Too complicated. Of course you see it's set up magically. Um, that's because I'm not going to let you, s you know, sit there and watch soap dry. Uh, cause that'd be really boring. These are not easy to get out. They take a bit of wiggling and they're easier if you if you do consider it wiggling. You push a little bit and then turn it and push from another side and you know that kind of thing because they're to me they're hard to grip. So um, it's easier if you give a little bit of wiggle and loosen them first. And as you see the clear part underneath created a full-on hole and it came out as a really cool looking little star. I mean, that'd be a really neat um, type of embed to play around with someday, but it's not what I wanted. So like I said up there in this in the text, this is why I needed the first layer, an additional layer of clear after the first layer. So um, I fix it easy enough. Um, when when you're fixing something like this, I have I am pouring as um, I think you'll see a couple of different times, about 133. I think one of the layers ends up being poured at 130, but anywhere in that range is good. You want it pretty decently above the melting point. And another little minor mistake I just made is in that center star. Some of those little bubbles on the top, I should have sprayed that with rubbing alcohol before I poured. And I didn't, so I got a bubble in the bod in the middle star. Um, it doesn't ruin the soap. I actually have considered going back and pouring a little bit of clear in it because it ends up being open at the back. Um, so I might even be able to fix it, but it doesn't even look terrible to me, um, as is. I think it looks fine. But, um, so there's the layer of clear and the layer of clear is what sets the stars into the soap and prevents the color from going where you put the star going to the inside or the outside if you wanted to do it that way if you wanted to do a reverse type of image it will kind of build a wall but you have to let it set up and you can't pour too much which you'll find I do you'll see I do later and I do pour when I do these clear layers I do pour clear into the star um, as well as around them when I do the color I don't pour it on the inside I only pour it on the outside of of the cutters. Um, these little stars, you'll see, because I'm going to pour um, another color over this um, beautiful sea glass green or sea glass aqua, whatever you want to call it. It's beautiful. Um, yeah, it's another Mad Micas. I, I think all of the ones I use today are Mad Micas. Um, they are my favorite. But as I pour the Key West blue over that, it, you're going to wonder why in the world did you put those other stars there? It's just going to cover those beautiful glittery stars. I just kind of thought I'd have a few little extra surprise embeds so that as you're using the stove, the, uh, sorry, 
as you're using the soap, you come across fun little stars in the middle of it too. I thought that would look really cool. Um, layer soaps are fun because you can, part of the fun of using a layered soap is as you, as you, if you're doing them a stacked layer like this, um, it, it changes as you use it. And there's all kinds of fun things you can do with that. And I'm adding extra mica to this one because I, I, it was a little too clear for what I wanted it. I wanted it a little bit more opaque. Um, and I, uh, and I'm spilling. It's really not a mystery soap if, uh, or soap video if I haven't spilled somewhere along the line. Um, that's who I am. And I can't prevent it. <laughs> um, but I, um, did have to uh, uh, add some more mica because I didn't want it to be completely see-through. I really wanted the color to show and be contrasting enough to show up when in the finished soap from the top. It'll show from the sides for sure and again as you're using it as these layers are uncovered but I wanted it to show in the star um, effect that I'm creating here. One of the difficult things about this um, I did put the I, I, my plan was to put kind of one, you know, put them far away from each other because my initial idea is with a different set of cutters. This is, this wasn't my original thought. I mean, it, it was my idea, but first I had an idea of another one I'm going to do. And this was kind of testing my idea for what I want to do. <laughs> this just happened to come out really cool. And so I really, really loved it. But I do have another idea I'm going to play with in the future with a different set of cutters. And this proved to me that it can work. Uh, it also showed me what I need to avoid. And part of that is being aware of where, how close the cutters can come to the edges. And I initially wanted to be able to, to have them not all centered. But, um, and that side one sort of doesn't stay centered, but it, it didn't work out the way I wanted to. I kind of wanted to line up one edge of it to be, um, with, with, uh, along with the edge, like one point would be like the center point instead of having the middle. I can't even describe what I'm trying to describe. I'll show you when I do the other soap, what I was talking about. Um, cause I, I just wanted them off center a little bit. Anyway, it works better to center them with the star shape. Um, with the other shape I'm going to be doing, it won't, it won't matter so much. But as you see, it's a part of the struggle of getting these out was that I had to put them in the corner. And that was my own fault for putting that little star, the tiniest star that I'm starting with in too close. So that was my bad. You see, it's off center, but it's not off center the way I wanted it. So. It ends up looking super cool anyway, so it doesn't matter. But I think you get the idea now of why and how I'm putting these cutters in. This is the clear layer. I'm filling the center and I'm filling, uh, gosh, about an eighth of an inch maybe. And then while it's still hot, you put the cutter. And you don't have to push it through another layer. You just push it to the bottom of the layer that's already, that's melted and fluid and you center it the way you want it. I'm not pushing hard on these at all, as you can tell. Um, and that creates, again, a little wall around it. So when I go, once this clear layer sets up, then I'm gonna pour, um, then I'll pour another color and it will block the soap. And then I got this last bit here, not last bit, but this layer here, where you see me putting the other cutters, the smaller cutters back in the soap. This was all off the cuff. This wasn't part of my original design idea, but um, I thought it was cool, came out really neat, and it was just kind of a last minute, hey, what if I put these in here? And um, that's what happened. So uh, I love the way it came out. I'm glad I did it. I'm not at all upset that I, that I had this little last minute thought. I am upset that I keep pouring more clear around the outside because it doesn't need more clear. It had plenty to hold them in place and create a little wall. That's all you need. And I made, this is part of why I struggle later, um, is I make these layers holding these little cutters in here too thick. And there's quite a few problems. Well, really one problem. There's only one problem that results <laughs> from this 
and um, it is just there a nightmare to get out. And you get to watch me struggle a little bit because I wanted you to see my struggles. <laughs> I, I try not to cut out too much. Um, when I'm editing, I'm mostly editing for time so you're not watching things like soap dry. Um, like this right now. This soap is set up now um, and um, I, I just cut out the part where the weight um, and you just wait till it's set up. It doesn't need to be, um, it can be kind of a, I don't, I, I wouldn't say a soft setup, but it can be, uh, you know, still a little warm. As long as it's completely firm, you're not going to have problems adding another hot layer on top of it. I am, um, as I said, I'm pouring these kind of hot, the layers. That's really important for it to stay hot, um, to adhere to the next layer. Um, your soap type may vary in in how hot it gets and what the melting point is. The crafter's choice melting point is between 120 and 125 for their soaps, the bulk of their soaps. And um, you, you want to melt it above that. You want to go for layering um, and for, or for anything where you're really needing to adhere, you're wanting to take that above the melting point. And my, the sweet spot for me, it may vary for you. Um, most of the time is between 130 and 133. Unless I'm swirling, then you want the temperatures to be on the way lower side. But there's no swirls in this, just layers. And this, they, there, it was right, right where I needed it, between 130 and 133. So, um... And you have to keep in mind when you're pouring something a little bit more complicated like this, I don't just pour the soap and I'm done. I have to pour from this corner. That was one of the other things I wanted to tell you is that with this, you want to make sure you get all the little nooks and crannies when you're it, with the soap, with the soap, with the stars, because um, any shape like this, that's more um, angled or complicated. It might be blocking some of the areas from getting, from allowing the soap to move. So you just want to double check that, um, that that soap is getting in every little corner. Now see if I'd stopped right here, it'd be great. But no, I didn't. I just kept adding that soap. And in part of it is I wasn't thinking of, I put all these other stars back in there, plus the larger stars. So there's less volume needed to create the same thickness. There's less soap needed because you're blocking more soap. Does that make sense? Um, well, it didn't make sense to me until later. And here comes the, uh, <laughs> my little mini nightmare. Because these are metal. They don't feel great on the skin. They're <laughs> and now I'm starting to panic a little. This is way sped up, by the way, now at this point. I, I, I let it go at about two times the speed, which is what I normally do for a couple of seconds. And then I'm like, I'm going to speed you through this. And yeah, boy, the struggle was real. And... I finally thought a little uh, about what else I could do and because I wasn't about to just let the soap go or ruin the soap because um, you don't want to peel it up from the sides. You don't want it to loosen from the bottom really. Um, so I would try to avoid that and I pulled out the old tweezers and I did look for, I have jewel, jewelry pliers or like flat nose or needle nose pliers, something like that. I couldn't find them. <laughs> I couldn't find them anywhere. And I didn't have a lot of time. I was working um, under time constraints. So I uh, grabbed my tweezers and thought maybe if I pull straight up and, you know, help to loosen them a little and then pull straight out. It did work. It worked fine. Um, but yeah, this is why I do voiceovers. So you don't hear anything that might accidentally fly out of my mouth when I'm really frustrated, <laughs> and really, really tired of pulling on little stars and just want it to be done. Um, I don't remember exactly what, oh, oh, see, I ruined the joke. <laughs> came, came in with it too soon. I thought I saw the little emoji up top and I thought, oh, I already said that joke. Oh, well. Um, yeah, I said a few things. I don't remember what, but they weren't nice because <laughs> I was table quaking and all kinds of things to get those out. So the lesson for you is don't pour too much soap on the layers as you go. And when you add more cookie cutters to block more soap, you need less soap to fill the area and get the, the height of the layer you want. It's not an exact thing. I wasn't measuring and weighing. If you want to do that, feel free. I was guesstimating at about an eighth of an inch per layer 
which would be enough for the soap to remain opaque and enough to build a little the little wall you want to have the little wall and you want to make sure having it even is helpful because if it's on one side one eighth of an inch an inch and one fourth on the other or one sixteenth on another you might you know you you either might have bleed through where it's uh, not built a strong enough wall to hold back the hot soap that you're pouring in there or you may end up just struggling like I did to get the soap out because you have too thick of a layer on one side anyway, and uneven layers, of course. So um, that's why I kind of level it off a little bit here. This that's all the glitter extra other than the stars. That's all the glitter I put in and look at the effect to me, to me, it just like livens the entire picture up. Yes, the mica underneath is pearlized. It's it's shiny um, and it has it's, you know, kind of a real small sparkle to it. But it's such a difference with those little bits of sparkles. It reminds me of the effect I used in my flurries soap with the snowflakes, um, but a little bit less even than that. It just looks like little trails from shooting stars um, or a few other little extra faraway stars in the background. I absolutely loved the effect and if I had added more than what I did I think it would have ruined it or if I had added much more um, I think it would have ruined it I just just the tiniest bit on here stands out so well I think you see it a little bit more when you're looking at the finished product um, when they've set up and I've cut them Oh, another spill yeah because I didn't even need that cup out there I had another idea I was going to try and I didn't go with it and I should have just moved it right away um, you see there's a skin um, on the edge that comes from pouring from the sides, which you have to do if you're doing real precise stuff like trying to avoid pouring in the star because um, you don't want to get the color in the star. You just want the clear. Um, so it, it comes right off. It's just a little skin. It's nothing to panic about. It looks gross when you're first unveiling it or it looks like it's, you know, somebody maybe put some plastic in there or something easy to pull off I started to do it with a knife and then I thought it was it was going to be a little uneven and I thought well I'll just wait till it won't really hurt it because I am gonna bevel these but I just wanted to get it out of my way while I was trying to measure and cut it was just annoying me so my cutting skills um, for soaps like this aren't that great I mean I, I get by uh, but you can see from the because I can't put my head under the camera to get directly above sometimes so I'm not great at judging that distance very well and the camera isn't perfectly centered over this either so it looks worse than it is but it's not directly over the top of those little marks so they're not bad they're just a little there's one bar that's a little bit wider than the others and um, but they're fairly straight um, as far as the cuts from you know top to bottom go fairly straight there's one that there's a little bit of an angle I'm not great at it that's why I use Uncle Andy's for the loaf soaps um, if you're not great at cutting you want an Uncle Andy's I don't like to um, go back and forth with the various sizes that it's needed because uh, Uncle Andy's is more of a loaf cutter for you know one inch uh, one and a half inches whatever you like and I like to keep mine at a very weird little um, it's between one and one and a half. It's somewhere in there. I forget what the exact numbers are. One and three eighths, something like that. Um, but that's why I don't like to use Uncle Andy's for something like this. I just mark it and cut it. Use my double handed handled cheese knife, which works really well. Um, if you mark it out and go slowly and center yourself over it and go straight down so that you don't see it bending or angling out either way, it's a little harder. Big tip here twist do not pull and this goes for any time you're cutting soap um, that sticks to that tends to stick to the knife it's much better to just twist it off and then a quick bevel and then I will show you a little bit of um, you get to see I can you can see a little of the sides here they look so cool they look so neat from every angle I think it's it's one that would be really fun to use and especially as you start to expose those little extra stars in there that that uh, as you go through the layers they'll be um, it's really a unique look and the other one that I plan in the future is um, gonna be 
a bigger variety of colors <laughs> and I can't wait to do it but it's going to be a hot minute because I have a lot planned on my and my little monthly planner of of uh, soap videos but I'll sneak it in there somewhere um, but I thought this was a fun way to take a look at layering and if the temperature is correct then it doesn't need you don't need to scratch the surface and you don't need to spray with uh, a ton of alcohol just spritz it, spritz it lightly um, it still etches the the top which is what the reason you're spraying it before you that it does help the layers adhere you do want to spray lightly but if you're spraying it with an industrial strength cleaning bottle and you're getting a lot of alcohol on there you're gonna cause yourself some problems and you may cause it to split later um, another um, suggestion with layering is wait longer than you think you need to to cut you know people always say you know be you know watch you know, turn it on its side or you know so you're not putting pressure on the layers and that's true too but if you wait a good long time t till it's really well set up it it will it will last I mean it will it will hold up a little better sometimes it's set up but it's not fully the layers haven't fully adhered and if you give it time they will um, so wait a, you know, wait a day longer than you think you need to. I didn't wait a day with these, but I did wait a few hours extra, um, before I needed to. We went, um, we had dinner. So there's that. And you can see, look at the, oh, I love even the, the depth of even just the glitter on top floating above those other stars. It just looks so cool. And see, it's just the tiniest amount. And the bubbles that you see in the back of the stars, that only happened because I messed up and put the cutters in too soon. So clear layer, little gl glitter stars, let it set up. Another clear layer, add your little cutters. And that's what I should have done. So I didn't, but <laughs> they came out cool anyway. Um, very cool. I was really pleased with them. And I am looking forward uh, like I said, to the other design, it's going to be a little bit more complicated and complex. I'm probably going to do it in a larger um, mold, probably in my big slab mold. I've had several of you asking about that mold because nobody can find it anymore, at least not on Amazon. Um, I would recommend checking Brambleberry and Wholesale Supplies Plus and may maybe other soap suppliers um, that carry that, that also happen to carry molds because a lot of them will have slab molds. Um, the, the one I use is about 10 by 11. I don't think it's a direct 10 by 10, but a 10 by 10 would work extremely well also. Um, mine was just cheap and on Amazon, but no, it's gone. It's just not there anymore. Um, oh, see the little tiny bits of that um, sparkle me sun, no, sparkle sunshine is just the name. Some of them are sparkle me something. But this one is just Sparkle Sunshine. Um, I will receive a small kickback if you purchase from me at no cost to you. Um, the kickback is a thank you for, for, um, from Mad Micas for um, me using their product a lot <laughs> on their videos. And it isn't anything anyone can apply for this. Um, but uh, if somebody purchases through their link, through their link, um, you get a small percentage. So thank you to those who do. And thank you for watching these videos, watching my tutorials. I always appreciate you. I appreciate your feedback and your questions. Next week, don't forget my Q&A. This is the last chance to ask questions for that um, on this video. And hopefully I will see you then. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye.